Hey guys, this is Josh with Future Cell Phone and Computer Repairs, and today we're going to be talking about some common phone uh, buyback repair scams. So let's get to it. The number one most common scam that I see is people selling blacklisted devices. Now, in order to protect yourself from this, and, and what this means, a blacklisted device is a device that's been reported lost or stolen by the owner. So if someone stole a phone and then the previous owner um, or the actual owner blacklisted their device by contacting, contacting AT&T, Sprint, Verizon, whatever their carrier was, then that device will no longer be able to be used on any carrier whatsoever. But what a lot of people do is they steal these devices and then try and pull a fast one on you by just selling you the device saying that it'll all work and unless you know how to check and unless you check beforehand there's no way you can tell that you're getting a device that you're actually going to be able to use so what you can do in order to prevent this from happening is go to various websites online or the number one best way to do it is to actually meet this person at the carrier so when I say that I mean meet them at an AT&T store a Verizon store Sprint wherever you're planning to take this phone to. Meet them there and then have the employees there check for you and make sure that that device is gonna be able to be usable on the network. They'll also be able to tell you if the device is attached to an account, if it's been reported lost or stolen, and in all that information, as well as they'll be able to help you out with some other things that we'll get to. So number one, make sure you check those IMEIs. Number two is they'll sell phones with factory reset protection or mobile device management enabled. Now, if you don't know about factory reset protection, um, it's something that's enabled. A lot of times whenever someone's signed into iCloud on their iPhone or if they're using a Samsung account with their Samsung device or there's various other types for Android phones. So what you wanna make sure you do, and I'll switch over so you can see this. If you're buying an iPhone, for example, you want to make sure that you go through before you purchase the device. Of course, you're going to want to test everything out. And you're going to go to your settings. So I'll open up the settings app. I'll let you follow along here. You want to check your settings. And first and foremost, get that in focus. You want to make sure that there is no iCloud account signed in. If they're signed out of their iCloud, then any uh, factory reset protection should be off the phone. And of course you want to make sure you're able to reset the phone as well. So this is an iPhone 7. We are on I think iOS 12 on this one. But what you're going to do is after that iCloud account is signed out, you want to make sure you can reset the phone. So you go to general, scroll down, reset, erase all content and settings, erase iPhone, erase iPhone and then give that a few minutes it'll go through and actually erase. And I'll keep that open so you can sort of watch uh, while we continue. Um, so they'll try and send you or sell you a a phone that, that's got this protect these types of protections enabled and that's a big red flag. It means that there's a chance that this phone could be stolen. Now it, it could also be a coincidence. Some people just aren't educated about factory reset protection and they might unknowingly try and sell a phone. Um, but what I've seen, uh, more often than not, people people will try and, and pull a fast one and just sell you a phone that you can't use. Um, number three, of course, we covered selling blacklisted phones, selling phones with factory reset protection. And number three is kind of a, a unique one. It's kind of one that I didn't really find out about until recently. But let's say you want to go to a local a local business. Now they might have good reviews, they might be a big store, international store even. But depending on who's working there, they might still try and uh, try and lowball you and, and lowball you pretty hard. And what they'll actually do is they'll do this. They'll go to a website similar to Gazelle or Gazelle which is a third-party business. They, they buy and sell smartphones online. And they'll try and convince you that the estimate that, that they're showing you on Gazelle is how much other people are, are offering for your phone. But it's a bit more dastardly than that. So let's say you went in to big phone company and you wanted to sell your iPhone. And of course, they pull up Gazelle. And let's say you have an iPhone 10 on AT&T 
and they'll show you what Gazelle is going to offer you for your phone. Now they're going to reference this price to try and make it look like they're giving you more but what they're actually doing see Gazelle will give you three hundred and forty four dollars for a phone in that condition what they're doing is they'll go over here and this is a bit technical and you don't really have to understand how this works um, they'll go into the code on the web page they'll find where it's listed at 344 and they'll change that to let's say like 275 and what that does is it changes the appearance of the web page so it makes it look as if gazelle is only going to be giving you 275 and then mr sales associate over here is going to say well i could probably give you 300 so that's 25 dollars more than you can get from gazelle when in reality they're giving you 44 dollars less than what you would get on gazelle so that's a bit of a dishonest tactic that um, a lot of sales associates might use um, at various at various repair companies um, there isn't much you could really do to prevent someone from like doing this other than being knowledgeable about what your phone is worth and you can do that by just calling around to different repair shops finding out what they're willing to give you for the phone as well as going to eBay and looking at what the phones is sold for and you can do that by changing the filter settings over here on the left um, so for example I've searched for an iPhone 10 um, and I want to find out uh, around about what these phones are going for so I've, I've gone over here and then just filtered it to where it's showing just phones that have sold and been completed so you can see these phones here's one that's on T-Mobile here's one AT&T uh, AT&T one 64 gig well that's with a, a dirty ESN that means it's a, a blacklisted phone it's 380 you don't want to buy anything like that if you won't be able to use it um, and then there's a working one so these phones reasonably in good condition on blacklist it'll probably sell for around um, 450 to 550 you know maybe more depending on the the capacity the amount of storage in the phone and the condition um, and what most repair shops really strive for is to make at least like 50 to 100 bucks per phone so what you can see here um, by offering you 300 they're offering you around two hundred dollars less than what they can actually sell the phone for and what they'll do is they'll end up trying to mark it up even higher than that even and there's plenty of places that do that um, so those are three ways that you can protect yourself from getting ripped off or taken advantage of I hope this video helped you guys out uh, let me switch back here and I'll show you real quick we'll pick back up right here real fast um, so this phone's just been reset and on iPhones it's pretty straightforward to go through the setup process. Once you've made sure the factory reset protection is off by removing the iCloud and resetting the phone, you just go through and you want to make sure you can set this phone up to the very end without it asking you for an iCloud. Which right now I'm just going to skip through all these steps, which is going to ask me for a Wi-Fi passcode here. As you can see, it's can't really see that too well, but it's going to go through numerous steps to set the device back up. And right past this is where you want to make sure it's not going to ask you for any iCloud. Which this one seems to be good. Skip. I'm just going to skip. Skip. All right. Set up his new phone. Don't have iCloud, set up later. And we'll just slide on through. And then once you've gone through all these little steps, which it's optional to set up your phone right now um, with your account and everything. You can always change this stuff later. It should show you the home screen. It should be totally blank. There shouldn't be any data. Uh, or anything left on the device after it's been completely reset. So those are three ways that you can make sure